Making materials is usually one of those steps that takes up a lot of time. On top of that, even though creating materials is a super exciting part of 3D design, for many beginners, it can feel like a complicated process compared to other tasks like 3D modeling. A lot of people struggle with it when they're just starting out. That's why in this episode, I'm going to show you a new method for making materials, one that makes the process way faster. And we'll use this technique to create the material for our 3D model in this episode, which is the rock. Okay, now don't forget, you can download the free practice file for this episode from the link in the description. Just grab it and let's get started. Unfortunately, I caught a cold, so my voice might sound a bit off in this episode. I just wanted to apologize for that, but the show must go on. So let's jump right in. All right, before we jump into anything, we need to UV unwrap our model. But before we do that, if you remember back in season one when we were modeling this rug, we scaled it down on the z-axis. Now, as I'm looking at it, I realize it doesn't look quite right. It's feeling a bit flat. So let's fix that first. I select the object, press S for scale, then press Z to lock the scaling on the z-axis. Now, I'll increase the scale just a little bit so the rug gets some puffiness. This way, it'll look more stylized and visually interesting. Right? Okay, now, since I changed the scale in object mode, if I check the object properties, you'll see that we need to apply the scale. So, I'll make sure my object is selected, press Ctrl A, and choose scale to apply it. You can see now that the scale values for all axes are reset to 1. Perfect. With that fixed, let's move on to the UVs. I move my mouse here, click and drag to split the viewport into two sections, and change this section to the UV editor. Then I'll press Tab to enter edit mode, I'll also enable a UV sync selection so I can see the UV islands of the object, even without selecting any components. Next, I'll move my mouse back to the viewport, press Ctrl 7 to switch to bottom view, and press 2 on the top row of my keyboard to activate edge select mode. I'll click on an empty space to deselect everything, then press Ctrl space to maximize the 3D viewport. Now holding Alt and Shift, I'll select these edge loops. All right, then using middle mouse and drag, I'll switch to perspective view and zoom in a bit on this part of the object. Again, I'll hold Alt and Shift to add this edge loop to my selection. All right, then I'll press U and choose Mark Seam. Now, I'll press 7 on the numpad to switch to top view, then I'll press Alt Z to enable X ray mode. Next, I'll click and drag to select these edge loops, zoom in a bit, and hold Alt and Shift to add these two edge loops to the selection. Now, I'll press U and choose Mark Seam. With Ctrl Space, I'll minimize the 3D viewport, then I'll press A to select everything, press U, unwrap, and select angle based. All right, as you can see, each UV island needs to be straightened. So I went ahead and straightened each one. Since I've covered this process multiple times in previous episodes, I'll just keep explaining it again here to keep things concise. Just a heads up, sometimes the rectify option in the text tools add-on doesn't work perfectly. If that happens, you'll need to manually straighten the UV islands. I explained the manual method back in episode 5 of this season, and I introduced the text tools method in episode 8. I've linked both episodes for you in the description. So if you're not sure how to straighten UV elements, pause this video, check out those episodes first, and then continue. Once all the UV elements are straightened, I select them all and choose average islands scale to make sure their textile density is uniform. Finally, I click pack islands, disable rotation option, and click pack. And that's it for the UVs. Now let's move on to materials. I'll press tab to switch to object mode, Press Alt-Z to exit X-ray mode, and use middle click and drag to go back to perspective view. Next, I'll open the material properties and click this icon to add two material slots. I'll select the first one, click new to create a material, and name it light blue. For now, I'll temporarily pick a light blue color. Okay, then I'll press tab to enter edit mode, click on an empty space to deselect everything, and ensure the face select mode is active. Now, I'll skip these four middle ones, Move my cursor here and press L to select the next four and click Assign to apply the light blue material. All right, to preview the material, I'll press Z and switch to material preview mode. Okay, I'll press Tab to go back to object mode. And as you can see, since we haven't assigned the second material yet, the first material is still covering the entire object. So let's fix that. I'll select the second material slot, click New and name this one dark blue. Again. I'll temporarily pick a dark blue color, okay, 
back in edit mode. I'll press Ctrl I to invert the selection, then click assign to apply the dark blue material to the remaining faces. And that's it. Now let's set up the materials for our object using the new method I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The method I want to introduce involves a very useful and important add-on called Blender Kit. Just to be clear, I'm not getting paid to promote this add-on, I just want to show you different ways to work with materials, okay? First, let's install the add-on. It's super simple. Just click the link in the description, which will take you to the Blender Kit website, then click Download Blender Kit here, and again on this page, click Download Blender Kit to start the download. After that, just follow these four installation steps shown here to install the add-on. As you can see, Blender Kit offers three plans. Feel free to check them out. But with the free plan, you get access to a huge collection of assets at no cost, which is amazing, okay? If you've installed it, let's continue. Once Blender Kit is installed, you'll see its logo up here. I'll click on it, and just keep in mind, you must be connected to the internet to use this add-on, okay? It's very simple to use. On this side, you can select the type of asset you're looking for by enabling its icon. From left to right, the icons represent 3D models, materials, scenes, HDRI images, and brushes. Since we're looking for materials, I'll enable the materials icon. On the other side, clicking the filter icon lets you choose whether you want procedural materials, texture-based materials, or both. I'll leave it set to both for now. And finally, in the search bar, I'll type knitted fabric, and hit enter. As you can see, a variety of materials appear. Clicking this arrow lets you browse even more options. Okay, if you hover over any material and right click, a window pops up showing extra details about the asset, like the author, license type, resolution, and more. All right, I'll close this window by clicking the X icon in the corner, and we're ready to continue. Okay, the material I want to use is this one, and applying it is incredibly simple. I can simply click and drag it onto my object. As I drag, you'll notice a guiding line next to my cursor. This shows which object will receive the material. For example, if I release the left click here, the material will start downloading instantly, and once it's done, it will be automatically applied to the object. You can see that the material is applied only to the part of the object where we had previously assigned the dark blue material. If we check the material properties, we can see that the new material has replaced the previous one. Okay, I'll rename it to Knitted Dark Blue Fabric. And that's it. You can see how quickly and easily we found the material we needed without having to manually set up textures. This method lets us achieve great results much faster. Just one important thing to remember, whenever you assign a material to an object using Blender Kit, all the related files get downloaded into a folder called Assets located in the same directory where you saved your Blender file. If I open the Asset folder, you'll see another folder named Materials inside it. This folder contains a subfolder for the material we just downloaded. If I open that, you'll notice that it's actually a Blender file, which stores the downloaded material. Okay, now let's move on. As you can see, the texture isn't displaying correctly on our object. Let's figure out why. First, I'll select the object and go to the Object Data Properties, here under UV maps, we can see that we currently have two UV maps. The second one, named Auto Map, was actually added by Blender Kit when we applied the material. This means that whenever you add a material using Blender Kit, it automatically creates a new UV map. Since the camera icon is active next to the Auto Map, it indicates that Blender is currently using this UV map to preview the material. This means that what we see in the viewport is the result of the active UV map the one with the active camera icon next to it. Now I'll press tab to enter edit mode. Okay, since auto map is selected, we can see its UV layout in the UV editor. If I select the other UV map, we now see the UV layout that we originally created. So clicking on either of these will show the UV islands of the selected UV map in the UV editor. All right, so this UV map isn't the one we worked on. The correct one is this UV map. So, to make it active, I'll click on this icon, which tells Blender to use this UV island for material preview on the object. As you can see, the result is quite different. Okay, right now the texture scale is too large, so let's fix that. But before adjusting the scale, since we don't need the auto map UV, I'll select it and click on this icon to remove it. Okay, now I'll switch this panel to the shader editor, 
And as you can see, Blender Kit has automatically set up the shader network for the material, making things much easier. So now we can just easily go ahead and modify the material as needed. For example, I'll press Shift A, add a value node, and place it inside this frame. Then I'll connect it to the scale input of the mapping node and set the scale to 20. Okay, that looks much better. Next, let's take the color. I'll press Shift A again, add a color ramp, and place it here. For the first color stop, I'll choose this color. And for the second one, I'll pick this color. Okay, I'll also move this one slightly to increase the contrast between the colors. And there we go. Now let's move on to the second material. I'll go to Material Properties, select the material, I'll click on this icon, and assign the same material we just worked on to this slot as well. Now, you'll notice a number 2 next to the material name. This means that the material is being used in two places and is linked. To separate them, I just simply click on 2, which will make this a unique material. Okay, the number disappears, and now I can rename it. And finally, in the shader editor, I'll quickly change the colors of these color stops. Okay. I'll also move this one a little bit to this side, and that looks good. Now let's take a look at the final result. I'll move my cursor here, scroll a bit, and enable render display mode. Then I'll click this small arrow, disable scene lights and scene word, click here, and choose an HDRI image to light the scene. You can see how much better the material looks under proper lighting. Okay, let's preview it in cycles. I'll go to render properties, Switch the render engine to Cycles, and set the device to GPU Compute for faster rendering. And here's the final result. You can see how quickly we applied materials using Blender Kit, making texturing much faster and easier. Alright, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.